Hello. Thank you for coming to view my poster. My name is Ingrid Tollick and I'm an assistant professor at Morgan State University. Today I'll be discussing the research on violence being conducted in my lab. Um, but rather than one study, I'll present findings from two distinct studies that assessed biomarkers associated with prior violent victimization. We recruited our samples from two different institutions of higher education, one located in Baltimore City and another in the suburban Baltimore County. The topic of violence was chosen because as you might be aware, Baltimore has high rates of violence with the residents having one in 54 chance of becoming a victim of a violent crime. In the broader US population, about 86 million Americans will experience violent victimization in their lifetime. And these numbers are really staggering in terms of potential health consequences, um, particularly because uh, the potential for long lasting psychological and possibly physiological effects of victimization is ever present. We approach this research with some assumptions that I will describe as I discuss each of the studies. An assumption, for example, in study one is that violent victimization is a stressor or a traumatic experience and um, many studies show that stress and trauma activates stress biomarkers such as cortisol. However, we assume such experiences will affect other biomarkers, particularly those involved in the immune system due to their interactions with cortisol. One biomarker of interest was the pro-inflammation signaling molecule called interleukin-6. We were interested in interleukin-6 because of previous research documenting its association with chronic health conditions that have disparate outcomes for certain demographic groups. For example, asthma and cardiovascular disease, even diabetes and anxiety are all associated with high baseline interleukin-6 levels. The idea that violent victimization is a stressor um, then suggests that um, high interleukin-6 might increase risk for some disorders um, by shifting baseline levels um, to a higher level for some individuals, particularly individuals belonging to um, marginalized or specific demographic groups that are already facing multiple stressors. For example, one might hypothesize that individuals um, in marginalized racial and ethnic groups or so low socioeconomic status in Baltimore City versus those of higher status or um, higher um, status ethnic or racial groups are more um, likely to have higher baseline interleukin-6 levels because of the, the amount of stressors they carry. So in study one, we collected peripheral blood samples um, and used an enzyme-linked amino assay to measure their um, baseline interleukin-6 levels. We also used a survey measurement um, uh, specifically called the Childhood uh, Traumatic Events Survey, 